Hello everyone, welcome to Probability and Statistics for Data Science. Today we're going to explain how to design a parametric model for a discrete random variable, and in the process we're going to derive the geometric distribution. Let's get to it. We're going to talk about the geometric distribution, but our main goal is to design a parametric model, and we're going to take as a motivating example our free throw data example. So let me explain what that was. We want to model streaks or of consecutive free throws, which uh, were shot by Kevin Durant in the NBA. So a streak basically is the number of consecutive free throws that he made before missing. Our data look like this. We have 377 streaks from a total of 3,000 free throws. And these are, you know, just as an example, here he made two free throws and then missed, four free throws and then missed, 17 free throws and then missed, and so on and so forth. In a previous video, we already talked about how you would go about estimating the PMF using a non-parametric estimator, which would just be the empirical probability of each uh, streak length. So for example, for 10, you would look at how many streaks have length 10, and you would divide by the total number of streaks, and you would get this value, okay? And so on and so forth. The problem we had with this is that this looks very noisy. Let's take 10, for example. It's kind of strange that 10 has the same value as 12, and then 11 is so much lower. That just looks like noise. There's no reason why the probability that he makes 10 free throws in a row would be higher than 11, but the same as 12, right? That looks just like the... Um, the that looks as if it comes from the fact that we have limited data and we have already said over and over again that when you're computing empirical probabilities and you have limited data, they're going to be noisy. Similarly, if we look here, here the probability of seeing a streak of length 39 or 52 is non-zero, but the probability of seeing a streak of length 40 is zero. Do we really believe that? No, what's happening is that these are events with quite low probability and we don't have enough data to observe them sufficiently so that the estimate of the probability is accurate. Okay, so that's kind of problematic. In order to address this, a possibility is to design a parametric model where we hopefully will incorporate assumptions that we know hold or we think might hold, let's put it like that, for our particular situation using our expertise. And this will allow us to constrain the PMF so that we have to estimate less parameters and therefore the estimate will be more stable when we have less data. Okay, that's the logic for using a parametric model. Okay, so we need assumptions. Without assumptions, we're not going to be able to design a parametric model. We're going to make two assumptions. The first assumption is that the probability of making each attempt is the same. Okay, there's this probability theta. Kevin Durant makes free throws with this probability. The second assumption is that all the attempts are independent. So now let me ask you, is, you know, do you think these two assumptions are actually true? Think about it for a moment. The answer is obviously no. Okay, like obviously the probability of making a free throw will probably be lower when he's uh, either more stressed or more tired or less interested, like less focused. So, and, and that all of those things will happen um, over the season right, depending on the circumstances. Similarly, the attempts are not independent because, you know, you, he might be shooting free throws in a situation where he's more stressed or whatever, so those free throws are correlated in that sense. Or uh, maybe if he misses a free throw, then he's more nervous for the next free throw, although I think it's been shown that uh, that is not really the case in, in general. Anyways, it's pretty obvious that the free throws are not going to be independent and also that each of them is not going to have the same probability. But nevertheless, and this is what happens all the time when you're doing probabilistic modeling, we think the assumptions at least are reasonable, so it's worth a shot to build a model, and then we'll evaluate the model later on and worry about whether um, about the performance of the model. But you're going to make assumptions that usually are not true. This is the point. But hopefully they're reasonable. Okay, so under these assumptions, what is the probability of observing a streak of length s? What's a streak of length S? Well, he makes S free throws and then he misses. Okay, so this probability is the probability of the event. Make the first one, make the second one, 
up to make the S one, and then the next one is missed. And there are assumptions. These events are mutually independent, so we can express the probability of this intersection as the product of the individual probabilities. How many made free throws do we have? Uh, S. Each of these guys is going to be equal to theta by our first assumption, right? Our assumption is that each free throw is made with the same probability theta. And then this guy is 1 minus theta. All right, so we have theta to the S times 1 minus theta. That is the PMF of our uh, probabilistic model as a function of uh, the length of the streak S. You can check on your own that it adds up to 1 when you sum this from 0 to infinity. So it's a valid PMF. This is what the PMF looks like, and it's kind of satisfying because it at least corrects for the two, um, the two aspects that I was mentioning before. Remember that I was kind of bothered that this point was here, then here, then here. Like that seemed uh, to be just artificial due to the, the noise, due to noisy fluctuations. And now our parametric model indeed is monotone here and relatively smooth. Similarly, it assigns small probability to all of these um, events, to a streak of length 40, 41, and 42. It doesn't assign zero to some and a non-zero probability to others, like the non-parametric um, model. Does this mean that the parametric model is better? No. We will do a separate video on how to compare non-parametric and parametric models, but as a spoiler alert, you need to evaluate them on held out data, basically. All right, so it turns out that in the process of designing a parametric model for our free throw data, we have essentially derived the geometric distribution, which is a very popular parametric distribution. Usually the way it's described is slightly different. The way it's described is we flip a coin until we get heads. All the coins are independent and the probability of heads is alpha. Under those circumstances, the number of flips that you need until you get heads is a geometric random variable with parameter alpha. If you realize this is the same situation as with the free throws, except that in the free throws we were like making free throws until we missed, so our theta was 1 minus alpha because now we're like getting tails until we get heads, and we were counting the streak of made free throws, we were not counting the last one where we missed, right? So in this case s would be a minus 1, okay? Does that make sense? Because we're not counting the last one where we missed. If we do those change of variables and we apply the formula that we derived, we get a geometric random variable. Alternatively, and I encourage you to do this, you can just um, derive the probability from the coin flip example. It's going to be extremely similar. So yeah, like we have defined a geometric random variable which has parameter alpha. This parameter is completely determined by the, um, sorry, this parameter completely determines the shape of the distribution. If alpha is small, remember we're in the coin flip example, so this is how many times you have to flip a coin until you get heads. So this is why here the probability of having to flip many times is relatively high because the probability of heads is relatively low. If we decrease the probability of heads, then we're going to get heads really quickly. So the probability mass is going to move to the left and it moves a lot to the left when alpha is equal to 0 0.8. For our data, you might be wondering how did we determine our parameter theta for our free throw data. We will see this in a following video. We did this uh, applying maximum likelihood. And that's it. This was a super short video. We have learned how to design a parametric model by establishing certain assumptions which are not true but are hopefully reasonable and allow us to obtain a model that can be fit stably from a small number of data, so that has a small number of parameters, and in the process we derived the geometric distribution. Thank you very much.